Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7, Back on the Couch. Uh, happy to be here with you. Um, first of all, thank you guys for the response to last week's talk. Um, people were very kind and, and very supportive and, and a lot of people reached out. And some people even reached out to tell me how it had helped them personally. People that were struggling with processing some, some grief and... Um, how, how they got something out of it, which is cool. And is of course, kind of the idea. Uh, the idea behind all this is that we're just kind of hanging out and talking about what's going on. And, and hopefully there's something of value in that once in a while for someone. Um, it's been going pretty good. Like I said, we're on, we're on week seven. Um, and people seem to be enjoying it. It feels successful I guess but a lot of that you know as with most things it has to do with how do we define success first and then can we get there um, obviously you know I, I would like everything that I do to find an audience you know you, you make stuff because you want people to see it and if a lot of people see it, that's that's a good thing. If I write a song that a million people hear, that would be cool. <laughs> or if thousands of people were watching these, that would be good too. Um, not to any like financial end or anything like that. Just, you know, I never understood the idea of making something and hoping only a few people get it. Um, but my definition of success for this from the beginning was that it feels good for me and that somebody gets something out of it. And um, we're seven weeks running now and it's been happening every week, so right on. Uh, I was hesitant to do it at first because there was a time where I was, I was very set in my definition of myself and I wanted to be a songwriter and that was it. And anybody who tried to see me as something else was kind of in the way of what I wanted. Uh, which is silly now, saying it out loud, but I sort of realized one day, like, maybe you can spend your life just being yourself. Maybe you can just be Christopher Gold for your life and figure out a way to make that a living and make that satisfying and make that helpful to other people. Um, so when I decided to do that, everything just got a little bit better. At first I was still just playing shows, but the shows got better because I'm, I'm a pretty funny dude, or I can be, I shouldn't say that. You should say that. Um, but my shows were very serious at the time because my songs were very serious. And, and I sort of realized like, well, if, Christopher Gold is funny, then Christopher Gold shows should be funny. And it just became this process of, of being more and more at ease and natural and authentic, I guess. And uh, the shows got funny. The songs stayed pretty serious and sometimes kind of sad, but the shows got funny and people were having fun and then the shows got a little bit bigger. And now even a couple of the songs have gotten funny, you know, which I like. Some of my heroes wrote funny songs, you know, Todd Snyder, John Prine, Towns Van Zant. Um, I think it takes some confidence to not be so serious all the time. And I, I find it more challenging to write even a, a song that might make someone feel good than I found it to write broody, sad stuff. I mean, Lord knows there's a place for those. I love me a sad song every now and then probably more often than that but um, the idea just sort of became like whatever is feeling good and whatever people are responding to maybe I'll just try to do that you know I heard Pete Holmes say you should follow the dream that's following you back and this was on an episode he says it a lot but I think I heard him say it on an episode with a band called Shovels and Rope uh, they're a very successful band that started out as two solo acts and um, they, they, it's a, a husband and wife now. Um, and, and they were playing solo shows and they started this duo to sort of pay the bills and they were both home from tour. And it turned out people 
really loved it. So they kind of leaned into that and, and became very successful and very happy too. And um, so I'm trying to let go of this idea of like Christopher Gold is a songwriter and that's it. Um, Cause it's just not accurate. You know, if I end up at the end of a life and look back on it and go like, mostly I wrote songs, but I also, I, I told jokes and made people laugh and I, I did a podcast and I maybe wrote a book or two and you know, just, um, I heard someone say once that if you are true to yourself, you'll have supply and demand covered, which means nobody can be you if you're really being you. And I think so far there've been a few people that like Christopher Gold. <laughs> By the way, that is my real name. <laughs> people ask me, they, they, they get all super serious. Um, they come up to me after shows and they go, hey man, and I go, yeah. Because that's, you can tell it's gonna be some real, hey man, I go, yeah. They go, what's your real name? And I go, what do you mean? And they go, come on. <laughs> like that's gonna do it. No, uh, my God-given name um, is, is Christopher Gordon Gold from Owensboro, Kentucky. Just like this guitar that we're holding today. This is a 1976 Alvarez Bicentennial that was purchased brand new at the Owensboro Music Center in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, it belonged to my dad my whole life. This is the first guitar I ever saw with my eyeballs. It's the first guitar I ever touched, and I love it. And um, it's just, it's, it's beautiful and special, and, uh, and every bit of mileage on it was put on by me and my dad and that feels pretty good. Um, I finally became the current owner of this guitar uh, when I quit smoking. I, I was a smoker and, and I quit and my dad was real supportive of me quitting. He's been supportive of just about everything I've done. Um, and he said, you know, if you can make it a year, the Alvarez will be yours. But if you ever smoke again, you have to give it back. <laughs> And that has kept me off the smokes for about eight years now. Um, and I have, I have nightmares where I smoke a cigarette and have to call my dad and I have to break his heart and then give him this guitar back and I'm not doing it. <laughs> so um, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys this guitar. I have a lot of history with this guitar and I'm gonna play it for you in a little bit here. First, let's have some coffee. Uh, this, this is a new mug. We're running short on mugs. This is a new one I bought for Tori last week to try to cheer her up after we had to say goodbye to our dog. Uh, it says, feeling slothy, need a coffee. <laughs> Tori likes slots. One day I had this real stony thought that like, what if sloths are moving at normal speed and everything else is just going really fast? I'm sure other people have had that thought. But my dad told me that apparently the problem, not the problem, but just what's going on there is that the, the plants that sloths eat uh, get them high. But it's also worth noting that you never see sloths fight. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> what else should we talk about? Um, I read an article, and there have been several articles about how uh, record sales, uh, and I say record, I mean music sales, physical sales of any kind, um, are down and, and physical media is a thing of the past. And, you know, I'm a big defender of physical media for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's just cool. It's the best way to support people making stuff you care about is to buy it from them. Two, I love the, the tactile nature of it. I love holding a record and seeing big artwork and reading liner notes and hopefully reading lyrics and and then there's stuff like, um, there's a thing called Option Paralysis. There's a Dillinger Escape Plan record called Option Paralysis. But there's also a phenomenon called Option Paralysis where you struggle to make a decision if you have too many choices. And, and I find it a lot easier to walk over to my shelf and kind of thumb through records and decide what I want to listen to versus you open Spotify and have everything right there 
but not in the most searchable way. And, and it's, I think it'd be easy to forget stuff if things were all digital. And um, I use Spotify, don't get me wrong. It's great for road trips and stuff like that. But um, I also read an article where they proved that if you invest money in a record, it'll matter more to you. And they even proved that if initially you didn't like a record, but you bought the record, you were more likely to go back and revisit it. And if you went back and revisited it, you were more likely to start to enjoy it. And I think that's cool. Um, just investing in stuff, especially when you end up with a record that maybe you had an expectation for. Uh, I'll talk about a record like that later, where you thought it was gonna be one thing and it ended up being another thing and maybe you were disappointed, but it wasn't a bad record. It just wasn't the record you thought it would be. If you buy that record, you're more likely a few months later to go back and listen to it again, maybe with fresh ears and lowered expectations, or not lowered expectations, just fewer expectations, I guess. Because um, the record I'm going to talk about is, is great, made by a living legend. Um, but first, I suppose I should play you one of mine, huh? Let's have some more coffee first. I tried to sing a song last night, and it didn't go great, and uh, kind of threw off the whole rest of my evening because uh, I was scratchy and and bummed. But maybe uh, the the endorphins of feeling like I'm in front of a crowd, uh, I'm really in front of a GoPro. Um, maybe that'll help. I'm gonna try it anyways. And like I said, if it goes bad, we'll edit it out. But this song's called "Burn the Boats." And it was kicking around for a long time. I brought it to practice um, for two other records, trying to get it on the record, and we just couldn't figure it out. And then finally, the last record we made, I brought it in again, and it wasn't working again. And then one day, the four of us just kind of realized that we shouldn't play it as like a folk song. We should play it as kind of um, almost like a Snow Patrol song, like an indie rock song. So if you if you listen to it, the recorded version of it, um, it's very like driving and rhythmic, and uh, that that last record we did was was real uh, drum and bassy. Not you know it wasn't dubstep or anything like that, but it was just uh, it had some grooves on it that I liked, and this was one of them. And I don't play it solo that often, but let's give it a shot. And it's in a lower register, so hopefully that'll help. This is called Burn the Boats. And it's going to be played for you on my favorite guitar of all time. It goes like this. Burn the boats Weigh them down with stones We've sailed too long To ever come back home we'll Save the sails that drink we brought It's enough to start over If it's all we've got All I know Is you're here And that's enough for me The world we live Still waiting there on that other shore with its traps and snares. There's something out there, so baby, let's get gone. I feel better moving, and I think I'm moving on. All I know is you're here And that's enough for me The Just a little distance from 
what we left behind what we left behind all I know is you're here and that's enough for me All I know is you're here, and that's enough for me. We did it. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for, for I've, I've got a few messages from people saying, oh, it sounds good, it sounds fine, you know? Uh, and I'm glad to hear it. Uh, I can hear the difference, and I can feel the difference, and my voice just cracked. <laughs> Luckily, uh, we're just a couple weeks away, I think, maybe three weeks away from getting down to Madison and hopefully figuring it out. In the meantime, let's leave you guys with some recommendations. Um, the first one is, like I was saying, sometimes you buy a record and it's, it's not what you thought it was going to be, and that sort of tricks your brain into thinking you don't like it. But if you pay for the record, you're more inclined to go back and revisit it. Uh, this record is by an artist who I, I buy all his records, and uh, you may have heard of him. He's a young upstart from Jersey. His name is Bruce Springsteen. This record is called Western Stars. Um, when I first heard him start talking about this record, I was under the impression, wrongly I guess, that it was going to sound like Nebraska or like Devils and Dust, like this really kind of sparse folky, dusty Springsteen that everybody loves. Um, I love all the Springsteens, but I especially love that Springsteen. This record didn't sound like that, so I, I listened to it once, it didn't sound like that, and I stopped listening to it. A few months ago, I, I finally revisited it, and what it really sounds like is him sort of soundtracking like a, a Western movie from back in the day. You know, like the, the, the Italian Western movies had Sergio Leone making them, and and he was hiring Ennio Morricone to do the soundtrack, and they were very, like I said, sparse and, and great. The spaghetti Western music of the time was just phenomenal. But the American Westerns had more orchestral soundtracks, and that's what the boss is doing here. And it's phenomenal. I really, 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 really like it. Notably, it closes with a record called Moonlight, or a record, it closes with a song called Moonlight Motel. I was listening to it yesterday, and, uh, so I highly recommend. Check it out. Next, we have a gentleman named Robbie Falks. This record's called Gone Away Backward. Um, note, the R is backward. Nobody tell the Toys R Us people. We don't need our guy Robbie getting sued. Um, Robbie Falks is an American treasure. I believe he's originally out of Chicago, maybe currently out of Chicago. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, he's phenomenal and he's criminally overlooked and underrated. Uh, people that know him love him, but not enough people do. So check him out. Um, check out Long I Ride. Oof, that's a song, man. Or uh, I'll Trade You Money for Wine. Uh, this isn't his most recent record, but those two songs in particular are favorites of mine. On his new record, he's got some, some great stuff too. Uh, so check him out, Robbie Falks. And again, there will be links to both of those in the comment section. Uh, for the third recommendation, I thought we would do something a little bit different and I would recommend a poet to you. Um, in the last couple of years, I started reading more poetry because I just started being less afraid of it. <laughs> you know, poetry can be intimidating and when you get into it, you kind of find your, your people. And for me, I found Mary Oliver and Wendell Berry and, and people like legends, but that had unique voices and it was a lot about nature and that kind of thing. And I liked that. But I also found this gentleman named Francis Delario. I believe he is from Pennsylvania. This book is called If and When We Wake. And I found this book because it has illustrations by a gentleman named Scott Hutchison, who was the singer for a band called Frightened Rabbit that I just adore. 
and uh, unfortunately we, we had to say goodbye to him a few years ago. But he left behind a lot of work, a lot of great records, and a lot of really good artwork in books like this. Um, this book in particular has a poem called Ground Rules that I would share with you now, but I'm not sure about like the legalities of that. And uh, we don't want to get our video pulled. Uh, but check it out. And maybe if you just Google Ground Rules by Francis Delario, um, you'll find it. And if I can find it, I'll put a link in the bottom for you. Um, he's another great one. He, he writes a lot about nature and a lot about... Um, for me, it's a lot about finding peace through little things in, in moments, which I think sometimes is our only option. And uh, I really like it. And it's great to just have as much of Scott Hutchison in the house as we can get to. So, If and When We Wake by Francis Delario and Scott Hutchison. Check that out. Don't be afraid of poetry. Uh, some of it's terrible and pretentious. <laughs> but like anything else, I, th I think there's, there's some of it out there for all of us. You just gotta work to find yours. It's the same with music, same with film, same with anything really. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys. My throat's starting to bug me, so I'm gonna go. Uh, but thank you guys for hanging out again. Thank you guys for supporting. Um, if you want to support, you can, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to support, you can share this with people. You can tell people about it. Um, there's, there's links in the description below to, um, if you want to chip in some money, thank you to everybody that has, that really means a lot. And, um, or just listen and watch and enjoy. Um, there's a reason there isn't an audio version only. I've, I've heard the requests for that. I haven't quite figured that out yet, and uh, I'm working on it. Um, beyond that, I should have a, a fun announcement next week uh, regarding some music that I made that I'm excited to, to get to you guys. And uh, if there's anything you want to talk about, shoot me an email or get in the comments down by my bare feet, um, and we'll talk about it. If you want to hear more guitar stories, if you want to hear stories about shows and, and people I've had the good fortune to play with. If you want to, you know, talk about being a dad or getting tattoos on your head, <laughs> both things I've done. Um, let's talk, let's hang out. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, take care of yourself and, uh, know that it's, it's okay to be down and it's okay to be up. And it's just, you know, um, it's not easy sometimes, and it's it's even less predictable sometimes. And sometimes it's predictable in a pretty terrible way. But we are here. That was a powerful thing I heard once. I could tell you that story someday. But I had a conversation with someone that amounted entirely to a hug and them saying, we are here. And that's got me through some stuff, so I thought I'd pass it along. Um, I love you guys. It's going to be okay. There's work to do and we're going to do it, but it's going to be okay. And uh, we'll see you next week. Be good. See you soon. Bye.